Is that left hand track still up there? Yeah, she's still there. We should be right to go that way. Sounds good. I haven't been up this track for quite a few years, but what we're going to do is set up a winch scene and we're going to show you step by step how to winch up a hill like this. And of course, I've got Mark from British Off Road who's won multiple winch challenges and knows his stuff back to front to go through it with you. Very important to make sure your recovery gear is easy to get to in the situation. So we'll leave it there and we'll come back to it when we need it. Mark, you got a copy up there? Yeah, gotcha, you're right to come up. A good thing to look at too, is when you've got a spotter like I have, is that they've got a UHF, so they can communicate with you to let you know what's going on. On my way. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna start crawling up there to see how we go with it. That's about it, I'm there. Okay, hold her there. Copy that. That's a lovely spot to stop. I'll get the recovery gear out. So this just looks like a simple single line pull. So we'll have a look in the bag and see what we need. We've got a full recovery kit here. Uh, we won't need it all in this situation, but it's very important to have a full kit in case you need to double up or, uh, or you need to extend your winch out. First thing I'm gonna do is take my ring off and um, put the gloves on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna use is a tree trunk protector. This protects the tree uh, from the winch cable and stops us from damaging that. And to attach that to the winch cable, we're also gonna need a bow shackle. It's important to have rated straps and bow shackles and something that's a decent size, not just so it's strong, but so you can actually get the tree trunk protector into the bow shackle. And the other thing we're gonna need is a winch dampener. In case we do break something, this stops the winch cable and hooks the heavy gear flying back towards the car and damages the car, and more importantly, stops it damaging people in the car or in the vicinity of the winching operation. So I've got the tree trunk protector and the shackle inside the winch dampener, and we're gonna go up and find ourselves a suitable tree. When we do up the shackle, we do it up to the end, and then just back it off slightly, otherwise you'll never be able to get it undone again. Okay, so now we're ready to go and get the winch cable. So, Jamie, where's the lever on this thing? I got it in here. Ah, it's a bit too flash, mate. Uh, so, can you disengage it for us? Done. So, Jamie's got the worn spidure on his winch, and it's got this feature where it's got a sleeve over the, the last of the cable. That's for two reasons, to protect the rope on winches that have a break inside the drum from the heat, and also to tell you when to stop unspooling the cable. Once you get to the red, it's advisable not to pull any more cable off. If you need more cable than that, you'll have to go to a different recovery situation with a winch extension strap. It's definitely not advisable to take any more cable off when you get to the red. So here's another tip. Uh, it's easier to unwind the cable here and walk an unweighted cable up the hill than it is to try and pull it off the winch while you're walking up the hill. So we've unspooled enough cable to get to the tree, hopefully, and we're gonna take it up and hook it onto the tree trunk protector and the shackle. So today we're using synthetic cable and we're gonna put the dampener on at the hook and shackle because that's the heavy part of the equipment. If you're using steel cable, you'd put it in the center third of the cable. So now the cable's hooked up, it's what we call live. So it's uh, dangerous, basically. If the car slipped backwards now, the cable would come under tension. So you should never cross a cable and you should make sure that behind the cable, behind the tree or anchor point, there's nothing or no body in the road. So now we go stand aside and we'll get the radio out and call Jamie up. Okay, Jamie, you can take up the slack whenever you're ready. Copy that. Do you want me to um, let the winch do all the work or do you want me to help it by driving? Uh, we'll winch and drive as soon as the slack's taken up. Copy that. Okay, you got tension now. Sure have. Okay, winch and drive off in first gear. Copy that. I've got it in first gear, low range. I've got the winch controller here, and I'm gonna pull myself and drive at the same time. That's okay, now steer a little bit right to keep the cable lined up. Uh, 
There you go. Nice and simple. Oh. Okay, right, stop there a second. I'll just move that damper back up again. Copy that. Okay, you're right to go again, and we want to start steering left and straddle that rut. Okay, that's enough. Alright, gang, do now. Just drive up enough so the winch goes slack, and that way we know you've got drive. Copy. Okay, that's great. Okay, so Jamie's over the worst of it now, and we hopefully can drive from here, so we're going to unhook the cable. Looking back up to the car. Okay, winch in slowly. Right. It's very important when we're winching this last part in not to have your hands near the winch because the winch will pull your hand in quite easily and obviously do some damage. So now I'll move the gear off the track and uh, let Jamie go. Okay, good job. Thank you very much. Okay, one last thing. Everybody gets excited that they've got up the hill and they've got out of the trouble. And uh, quite often people forget to go back and pick up some or all of their recovery gear. So the last thing to do is pack all your recovery gear up, make sure it's still in good order, and away you go, ready for the next track. Well, there's a nice simple way to show you step-by-step step how to use your winch. I hope it helps. Next time we'll show you a more extreme way of using your winch.